Hey guys, this vlog is already really, really, really long because it's like a month's worth of stuff that I'm trying to catch up on. And I'm gonna try to make this really quick just so I'm, I can cue the outdated vlog because this vlog was actually supposed to go up yesterday, Thanksgiving. So uh, happy late Thanksgiving, but for the whole vlog, I'm pretty much just saying Thanksgiving because it was supposed to go up yesterday, it didn't. And so uh, I do have a reason though that I wanted to record this quick little segment for it to, to share with you guys. And uh, I mean, while Thanksgiving kept me busy enough I woke up my sister barging into my room with Joe one-on-one -on -one like your reviews one-on-one -on -one, who's actually in this vlog you're about to see he's on her he's on the phone he calls her because I was asleep and uh, he I mean she hands me the phone it's on speaker and then he's like don't do anything look at Robert Downey Jr's Twitter and I was like oh god what happened I'm just assuming the worst like I usually do because I'm a Ross and then nope I go to his Twitter to find that he posted my Thanksgiving photo from 2013 on not just his Twitter, but on his Facebook and on his Instagram. I was like, what? What? My favorite actor ever just posts my photo? Just makes it his Thanksgiving photo and I'm like, what? And when you wake up to something like that, your brain just, just completely like, I, I, it was just, it was like the most, I was, I just, my brain felt scrambled and it still pretty much is. Like I was like, I, I, I was unable to fathom what I had just woken up to. It, it, it still, even right now, feels like a dream that Robert Downey Jr., Iron Man himself, this incredible actor, this this huge icon that is a huge part of my life, who's a household name in not just my house, but people across the globe. I, I, he picked my photo to be his Thanksgiving photo for this year. And uh, I was like, I'm sorry, what? I, I was, I was, I am, I am still, I have no words for this. It is so cool that he actually went out of his way. I don't know if he found the photo on Google Images because actually I looked, I figured it out. If you just type in Iron Man Thanksgiving on Google, my photo's right there. It's the second photo that comes up. It's actually not that hard to find. So I'm guessing that's how he found it. And then maybe he handed, off to, he handed it off to his PR team and he was like, hey, post this because uh, he actually did give me credit for every single post. I mean, it, this the Instagram post has a link to my Instagram, the Facebook post has a link to my Facebook, and the Twitter post has a link to my Twitter. It's like either he did that himself, but or I don't I don't know. I don't care cuz I know he saw it and I know it was him behind the reasoning for actually posting it. It is it is thrilling. It is just so thrilling because I don't even think I need to give you guys a reason. It is I just had to record this little extension. I mean, Robert Downey Jr., he, he doesn't even post fan art, actually, like, on his platforms. It, it, this, was, this was just totally random. He just needed a Thanksgiving photo, I guess, and he was like, he looked up Iron Man Thanksgiving, and he was like, hey, <laughs> it's like, there was my photo uh, from two years ago, and then he just posted it. it I, it's like, just when you think you are invisible, to celebrities. I mean, he's the highest paid actor in Hollywood right now. Well, just when you think you're invisible to people like that, they find you. I mean, like that, it, it, it is, I, I know I'm going on for a while here and this vlog is already incredibly long, but I just had to record this quick little extension. The rest of this vlog is totally outdated uh, because it was supposed to go up yesterday and uh, I just wanted to record this and make sure that you guys are aware why this vlog got delayed and how this basically just like totally screwed up my whole day in the best way possible. And by the way, what he captioned it is hilarious. I call this Last Supper Before Civil War. Happy Thanksgiving to you and yours. It's like... He freaking, that was, <laughs> he used my photo as his main Thanksgiving photo for 2015. How cool is that? I just, this happened, obviously, this happened uh, after I recorded this vlog, after I went to bed, woke up to this madness. I was like, holy crap, my Twitter has been exploding all day long. I mean, all day. My, my Twitter, not just my Twitter, my, my Instagram and my Facebook, just notifications. I mean, hundreds upon hundreds upon hundreds of notifications because, because I'm mentioned in all of these posts, I'm getting all of his notifications. And it is weird and overwhelming 
and scary how many people just flood in in a matter of minutes with someone like this. I mean, it, it's Robert Downey Jr. I, I mean, all of my friends, all my family, all my relatives are just freaking out. It has been, it is such an honor being able to actually have my photo be his Thanksgiving photo for the year 2015. And especially after all of the Civil War madness. I mean, he just got off Jimmy Kimmel with Chris Evans to debut the poster and that amazing trailer, which I talk about a little bit in this vlog in a really incoherent way. Um, so, I mean, I, I again, I know I'm already dragging this on really long. This is now like a 40-minute vlog, and I really appreciate it if you guys are going to stick around for the rest of this, but I just had to show you this because it's awesome. So, um, uh... I'm going to stop now and cue the outdated vlog. Hey! I hope you remember me. It's been a month. Um, I'm not even going to bother trying to create an excuse around that, but I'm here to talk about a month's worth of crap with my buddy Joe. 111 Lego Reviews 111. Say hello. Hello. Yeah. Let's do this. Yeah, he's he's stayed up like an extra half hour here because... Uh, it is impossible getting my family just to, like, quiet down a little bit. So, um, yeah, but I haven't vlogged for a month. There's a lot to get through. I've tried to jot down a small list of stuff that has happened that I want to talk about. This is going to be a really long vlog. So, I mean, if you're interested in what I've been up to and things that are happening, then, hey, welcome. But happy Thanksgiving, first of all. Thanksgiving's today. And, uh, well, it's not Thanksgiving. Well, I guess it is. It's been Thanksgiving. Yeah, it's, yeah. Yeah, it's Thanksgiving for, for, it's been Thanksgiving for me for like an hour and 15 minutes. It's like one fifteen in the morning right now, but happy Thanksgiving. I'm working on a photo right now to post for tomorrow, just as a, you know, annual celebratory thing. So yeah, that's happening. Thanksgiving gonna eat a big turkey. I finally got a turkey piece. I'm gonna run in the bedroom really quick, Joe, actually. I'm gonna show them the freaking photo setup. Because um, I set up the, the, the Thanksgiving photo in about like few minutes. Oh, and I put up shelves. My dad and I actually put up shelves in this room. And we're moving out of this apartment in like April. So I'm not really sure how useful these shelves are actually going to be or not. But regardless, they are set up. And I've got some here too. And uh, this I got. I'll talk about Battlefront a little bit. But this I actually got at the uh, GameStop premiere because I won one of the raffles that they did. But anyway, wanted to show you this. This is my Thanksgiving setup that I put together and uh, it's pretty sweet. I've got a lot going on here. You can see I finally got the turkey piece. This is what I was talking about. I've never had one of these. I'm sure all of you in the comments are going to be like, I have five and uh, I never had one. And like for the past like three years, I've never been able to actually make a Thanksgiving photo with one of these. And then like just like four days ago, I remembered, oh crap. I need that damn piece if I want to, I like, it's been years, like, without that piece in all these Thanksgiving photos, and I was finally like, dude, I need to get that piece, I went on Bricklink, and I was like, hey man, ex like, freaking priority mail that to me, and that'd be great, and thankfully the guy did, and, uh, it worked out, so, yeah, but, anyway, Thanksgiving photo, working on that, editing it together, you might notice there's a lot of Christmas, like, everywhere in our apartment, <laughs> and, uh, we don't exactly have a house anymore, so we ha we can't decorate outside, but my mom has definitely been making like the most out of the interior, so that's something that's been happening that I haven't really been taking any part in because I've been too busy working on the Force Awakens figures, and that's really, if I were to give you an excuse, the number one reason why there haven't been any vlogs. And, uh, yeah, but before I talk about the Force Awakens, before I talk about Battlefront, Captain America Civil War, the trailer dropped, just yesterday and it was amazing oh my god i couldn't freak out as much as i really wanted to i had to internalize like all of it but uh it was insane i the, the trailer was just i i i have no words i mean it was fantastic it's like everything i was hoping it would be and they left out a lot i mean while we did see quite a bit going on in this trailer i mean i mean you know they really 
this trailer was definitely serious. There was no like funny tag at the end or anything like with Ant Man, like we like was apparently what was mentioned in D twenty three. But I mean, everything in this trailer to the emotional tension building between Tony and Cap being handled so well to Falcon, Bucky being clearly like a huge point of uh, conflict for the film. I mean, we didn't see like you only, you only saw Crossbones and uh, the Vision at like a distance. And I know some of you guys are gonna comment down below that the Vision wasn't in it. But if you look closely in one of the shots, you'll see like Scarlet Witch and Hawkeye. It looks like at an airport running, and you can see the Vision standing behind them. Um, so I mean, he is there, and I mean, like everything about this freaking trailer, all of it. I, I, I mean, I Black Panther. Holy crap! The, the introduction of Black Panther. He looks amazing. His costume, his suit looks amazing. I'm just praying that Lego actually gets that helmet right next year so I won't have to sculpt one because that would be much appreciated. And uh, I can't wait to actually get started on these figures and just get started on 2016 figures once I get past The Force Awakens. It's going to be a pretty freaking huge year for me. I have a lot planned and uh, I'm definitely going to do my best to stick to all of it. And the ending though with freaking Cap and Bucky going up against Tony in what appears to be some kind of temple or I wouldn't say temple really. I mean, some kind of, I don't know what, what that kind of, what that structure is that they're in, but it, they're clearly in mountains and it looks amazing. And Tony looks like he's getting really hammered and everything about it. it the Russo brothers, the, the directors of the winter soldier who are doing this, who are doing infinity war, they are just the best. They handle everything so well and especially fight choreography and stunts and everything visually Everything they do is stunning. I am so glad that they clearly are able to handle the entire roster of the Avengers so damn well. Granted, the exception of, like, you know, the likes of Hulk, Thor, you know, etc., the ones that aren't here. Um, but, I mean, in the soundtrack, God, this soundtrack was amazing in the freaking trailer. I cannot believe how, how great this is. It, it, it's so exciting. And, Joe, what did you think? You know, The Winter Soldier was one of my most favorite Marvel movies. It was everyone's like one of the, it was like everyone's number two after the Avengers. Honestly, it, it like the Winter Soldier, the Russo brothers are so damn good. It left everyone questioning whether they liked it or you know a, this a solo Captain America movie over the freaking Avengers. You know, it's like I am so excited that they are pretty much taking over the Marvel Cinematic Universe. You know, post Joss Whedon, and I mean you know the Return of Thunderbolt Ross that looks awesome. <laughs> and uh, I mean you know, granted there was no Spider Man. And uh, there was no, they, you only saw Vision like very, like at a distance, like I said. Um, you didn't really see, um, you didn't see Ant-Man at all. He wasn't in this, even though he was in the D23 version. You like you only saw Crossbones from a distance, if you really look closely. I mean, they left out a lot, which is good, because I mean, you still got trailer two and three coming. So I mean, and even four, because I know they did like a fourth one for Age of Ultron. So I think Spider-Man will definitely be saved for like the, the last portion of the uh the of the civil war marketing and um all these sequences and everything about the story i just cannot believe this is already happening we have our first trailer for captain america civil war probably i think the biggest ensemble superhero movie to date and uh it's happening in the mcu it, it's i'm excited man i've already talked about it too long anyway yeah, I told you this vlog was going to be long. I just wanted to get my thoughts out there. And uh, so Battlefront, just wanted to mention that really quick. Battlefront is happening, and uh, or happened anyway. And I've been playing that quite a bit with this guy here, Joe, and also with a few other buddies who... You know, it's it's been it's been really enjoyable so far, and I really do appreciate what EA and Dice did to make this game, and it, it's really fun. I mean, there are modes out, of, out in there that I wouldn't really, you know, that I would probably take out of the game if given the choice. You know, things like drop zone, cargo. Um, I think heroes versus villains kind of sucked. There were a few modes in Battlefront that I just was like, ah never gonna play them again i really do love hero hunt though and uh freaking uh supremacy i wasn't terribly big on but walker assault is fantastic i mean you've got fighter squadron which is amazing i'm just like dice please change the skybox and just make it a space battle i mean j just for the hell of it if they're not gonna go full on in like the original battlefront where you can invade both ships and like take out frigates if they're not gonna do that just change the skybox give us a map and granted i know dlc a lot's gonna be coming for battlefront and i i'm really you know stoked for what they end up doing and you know Jakku seems cool it's just I think really Battlefront 2 is going to be where it's at in you know a few years because EA did say they do have plans for future Battlefront games 
Um, so, I mean, if they can integrate Clone Wars era missions, I mean, possibly a campaign and also space battles on top of the Galactic Civil War stuff and give us the full package again, I think you can definitely have a game that will last for many, many years to come. And the one thing that I was so blown away by with Battlefront and, you know, even with just these surface battles uh, in the Galactic Civil War is the attention to detail. There's not a single sound effect out of line. There's not a single character model. There's not a single detail anywhere in the entire game that makes that takes you out of it. That makes you feel like that wasn't in, that wouldn't have been in the films. That wasn't in any sort of material that I'm familiar with from the Star Wars universe. It is all exact. That was so impressive to me. And I really appreciate that from DICE. And it's like even if this is just the original trilogy, they handled it perfectly. And it runs so damn well. And I'd, I'd really hope it would run well, given that it's only a multiplayer game. So, And there was really nothing else for them to focus on. So, I mean, it's, uh, it, it's Battlefront is amazing. It, it really is. It's just I hope they are able to expand on it, potentially in DLCs, and hopefully, if not, in the next, you know, the sequel to this Battlefront. Because it's freaking incredible what they did accomplish. Joe, why did you mute your mic? I heard that. No. Anyway. Yeah. Um... So, The Force Awakens. We've got 22 or 3 days three and weeks. 3 weeks. Yeah, and I'm I will be right back again, Joe, because I have to go and like start kind of undoing that Thanksgiving uh setup that I have going because all my Force Awakens figures are over there, but I'll give you guys a look now that you've already sat through 10 minutes of me talking. I'm going to give you a look at the Force Awakens figures and what I have so far on some of them because uh, some of them aren't really far along enough to where I'm willing to show them yet. But regardless, uh, let's start with Rey. And uh, because this is the, they're, I kind of took away all their accessories because this is the Thanksgiving photo. So uh, I didn't exactly give Rey her staff or like Finn his lightsaber. Kind of inappropriate. So anyway... Ray, that's not the facial expression I would, you know, have her, you know, uh, sporting normally, but uh, Ray is pretty much done. She's got a heavily modified Cape Madness uh, waist cape there and a lot of different paint work, a lot of different lines that I, you know, the, the figure was really time consuming to make to get all of that detail painted on, but it really, really did pay off. I can't wait for you guys to see the finished figure, you know, when I do. I mean, it is pretty much finished. It's just there are possible, like, couple extra details I might add. I don't know. Um, but regardless, Finn is definitely done. Finn was Fairly straightforward. Originally, I was going to keep the printed torso, but I ended up getting him a Cape Madness modified jacket. Painted this entire thing, detail and all. He's got arm detail. I use the Death Star Trooper legs because you guys know how much I love him with the character that I'm making has just regular black pants. He's got the freaking wrinkles on the shirt that I painted on for added detail. The shoes, it's all there. And uh, you can definitely see these in much better quality over on my Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, which I always recommend because it's just, it's just a lot easier for me to make photos and post them over there than it is for me to do regular videos on my main channel and vlog. You guys know that I say it at the end of practically every video on my main channel anyway. But Han Solo, who has a cup in his hand at the moment, he uh, th this figure turned out awesome as well. Originally, I was going to keep Lego's torso and I was going to keep um, their pants, like their actual legs, but then I realized I like, you know, because I gave Finn a 3D jacket, like, you know, with modified Cape Madness jacket, I gave him a whole new painted torso and his own Cape Madness jacket. I gave him a whole new painted face, which I think I, I you guys would have already seen by now because uh, I made it a while ago, actually. The legs are entirely new because, unfortunately, Lego gave us black legs, and if you look at Han Solo's outfit, Harrison Ford, what they had him wear for The Force Awakens, it's, he does not have black pants, so I made sure to change that. And then also, uh, uh, who am I going to pick up next? Phasma. This is a figure. This is a thing, too. And Phasma, it might look simplistic. It might look like from right here that I didn't do anything, but I actually did a lot on Captain Phasma, and uh, that includes a ton of arm detail that I painted on, and uh, a lot of uh, leg detail as well, some of which is actually based on that Stormtrooper I did earlier in the year. And uh, this is actually a Foe 11, by the way, the new uh, like Stormtrooper blasters for the for First Order. And uh, this was, uh, Will Chapman from Brick Arms actually sent out a few of these to me so I could, you know, uh, make one and, uh, you know, paint one for Captain Phasma, and it turned out really awesome, and I'm really appreciative to him uh, for shipping out a couple so I could actually, you know, include them with the showcase, because or else I would have ended up using a regular Lego blaster and like painting over it, kind of like what I did with that Stormtrooper earlier in the year. So that's pretty awesome that he did that. And uh, so yeah, that's a thing. And also, you might notice with Phasma, I did actually do like some three-dimensional patches. This is all stuff that I have been working on for like the past 
month, like ever since Halo 5 ended and uh, the showcase didn't work out and wasn't able to happen on time, it's just been Force Awakens for me nonstop, just working on these to make sure that the most anticipated movie for me from the past three years that I make the deadline, that I am there to celebrate it with the best freaking showcase you see. And uh, BB-8 was something else that I've been, I was working on after Halo 5 and I actually finished him probably two weeks ago-ish and uh, you can't really see it that well. But uh, compared to a regular LEGO BB-8, the amount of detail that I painted onto this is freaking insane. I kind of am afraid I might have went a little overboard, but uh, it turned out awesome. The lenses are now three-dimensional and they do protrude from the dome, and I'll be doing the same thing to R2-D2 and a few of the other things that I'll be you know, working on with him. So I mean, I'm not totally done with R2-D2, but I've been working on him actually uh, more recently, actually today, and hopefully tonight I can finish him. Um, but you can see R2-D2, I'm adding a ton of detail onto him as well. And I started on the back, haven't made a ton of progress on the back yet. I mean, I, I like when I say that, I mean, I haven't finished it. I haven't done the bottom here and you know, I still have a lot to go on him, but he still looks freaking awesome. And like I said, maybe I can finish him tonight if I look, you know, if I work really hard, but you know, when you have like Star Wars characters like R2-D2, C-3PO, you never, I just, I've never made customs of them. I've never, you know, actually taken characters that are so iconic that have come in so many sets and actually like tried to customize them. So it's been definitely a unique experience, you know, working on uh, upgrading figures that have been in circulation for so, so long. And uh, also, speaking of C-3PO, I am taking the Force Awakens poly bag of C-3PO and adding some few, a few paint details here and there. Have not made a lot of progress on him, only a little bit of head detail. I did extend the uh, lines on the on this arm here, and I also added some toe detail, but aside from that, haven't really made a whole lot of progress on 3PO yet. But uh, let me just get this little freaking chicken leg, or uh, turkey leg out of, uh, <laughs> that's not the same animal, out of uh, Chewie's hand there, and you can see I have made a lot of progress on Chewbacca. Now he's not done. I would probably place him at maybe 80% because I still have some uh, fur to paint on to the side of his belt piece. And uh, also I have to make his entire bow caster. Um, but painting fur like this has been really, really interesting and it's turned out really awesome. And I'm really happy with the pattern. It kind of reminds me like, it reminds me of Groot in the sense that it's kind of random, but because it's random, it just looks so I don't know, there's just something that's so consistent and so satisfying about it. I'm really happy with it. And the toes that I painted on there have two different shades of gray in them. I can't wait for you guys to see all of this in its full form on December 17th when I do launch the showcase on my channel because that is the goal right now to finish all of this. And then Poe Dameron, who I don't have the helmet for right now, it's kind of over there. I'll bring, I'll go ahead and like snag a few of these just to bring with me as I go back over there. Actually, before I do that, the Arbiter, Master Chief, they have cups in their hands right now, but Master Chief has been done ever since Halo 5. The Arbiter, I mean, Josiah finished the sculpt and I painted practically almost all of it. I mean, it's not fully painted and you guys saw this in previous vlogs and I've had it for a while and Sonder did finish Spartan Lock, but the problem is he shipped it and uh, I, had him, I had him ship it with like two to five day shipping and that was like two, two and a half weeks ago. So, I mean, there's not much either of us can do. Or at this point, we're just praying that it'll show up either on his doorstep again, like it got, you know, sent back or best case scenario on mine. Because a lot of you guys have been asking me, where's the Halo 5 showcase? What happened? You're not talking about it. And I want you guys to know it is still absolutely happening. I just don't know when. Because now we are so close to The Force Awakens that there's really not much I would be able to do anyway, even if it did show up. Because The Force Awakens, of course, is my number one priority. And so even if it did show up and, uh, you know, things actually work out uh, for a change, that'd be nice. Um, I wouldn't be able to work on it until, like, after The Force Awakens. So in between, like, The Force Awakens release and New Year's would be the only time I'd be able to finish Locke. And, uh, you know, actually get that whole showcase, the Halo 5 Guardian Showcase, actually finally on my channel. And, uh, you know, it's a big collaborative showcase that I had planned that didn't exactly work out. And I'm just hoping that it'll still, you know, happen within the next month because that'd be great. So it can actually, I can finally put it behind me and, um, you know, make one hell of a late celebration for Halo 5 Guardians. Hi, Joe! Hi. I'm back. Just grabbed, like, the entire pile of Force Awakens figures. But, um... 
Yeah, so Poe Dameron, I did uh, do a little bit of weathering work on his helmet, and uh, Lego did a freaking excellent job with this helmet. There's like barely anything left uh, for me to do on it, you know, aside from the weathering. So that's a thing. Uh, what other things are there? Queen Le I don't know why I'm saying Queen Leia. I'm still kind of used to calling her Queen Leia after the rumor that she was apparently going to be called that for The Force Awakens, but she's actually General Leia, as J.J. Abrams confirmed this past month as well. Um, but I did make her head... Her head happened, and uh, her head is actually um, from the Kylo Ren's command shuttle. What I did was, you can't really see it, but I took that head, and I repainted the lips to be more of a dark pink rather than the, the like the super bright red that they are in the set. I took one of these hair pieces that I think really does work for uh, for General Leia in this in uh, you know for the Force Awakens, and so I pretty much just painted it in a dark gray, and the head is practically done. I mean, maybe I'll add a shade to it or two to make it look you know give it a little bit more depth, or maybe I'll just keep it the base color of gray to make it look you know a little bit more in line with the rest of the figures because uh, the rest of them are not going to have painted hair pieces because. Because uh, Han, he's got a base color of gray. You know, I mean, there's no reason to paint any of this. There's no reason to paint Finn's hair. There's no reason to paint, uh, you know, like Ray's hair. So, I mean, I don't know if I'll go any further with uh, the Leia hair piece, but it's just something I wanted to show you guys. So, what else? TV spots. There have been a lot of Force Awakens TV spots. I mean, when J.J. Abrams said that there's not going to be any more trailers, but more TV spots, um, he failed to mention that there are going to be like 30 or more, like freaking Avengers Age of Ultron style, because the amount that are coming out, it's starting to get a little frightening, and I've been avoiding every single one. I just do not even want to see new shots. I mean, that, the Avengers Age of Ultron, I, the Avengers, just Avengers Age of Ultron, I really love the film, but it's like everything that was in the film, I felt like I had already seen a bit of in the in all the promotion. I was just like, uh, it was an amazing film, but I was just like, I saw bits and pieces of all of that. So yeah, um, avoiding Force Awakens TV spots, and also uh, Cape Madness. I did make a Cape Madness order, and uh, I, got, I pretty much, I'm not, you know, I mean, the Cape Madness, you know, the, the accessories he makes are amazing. I've got a whole freaking, like, three bags here full of them, and uh, I mean, they're at my disposal. I can, you know, work on them and, you know, do whatever need be with the Cape Madness uh, capes there to, you know, make the figures really work. Um, but, you know, I, I already used, you know, what I, I needed to on Kylo Ren. I'm not sure if I'll do any more cloth work, um, on any of the figures that I have right now, because I mean, you know, uh, Rey already has her waist cape. Uh, Phasma has her cape. You've got Kylo Ren, who's already got his waist cape, uh, and still a cup. And also, um, you'll, where, where, is, uh, oh, he's over here. General Hux is a figure that I was not planning to do in uh, the Force Awakens showcase because I thought he was kind of a side figure, but then I kind of thought about it, and I was like, and d to be honest, they've excluded him from so much of the promotion that I was beginning to forget General Hux was in the film because then when I was reminded, like, oh, yeah, General Hux is a character, and he's, and he's probably going to be pretty big if he's talking over the entire First Order in that one shot um, that we've seen several times, I figure, you know, I, I looked at his costume, and really all it is is just a very basic black suit with a black trench coat, uh, the first order logo on one of his arms and a, and a like special type of pistol and I was like you know I can do that I can probably squeeze that in in time uh, so General Hux will most likely be in the showcase if not I'm not holding myself to it because he was never in the original plan but General Hux I was going to keep him as a side figure and do him after but I, if he can if I can fit him into the main showcase you'll see him if not this is the progress I have on him as of right now so yeah um other things involving the force awakens uh the showcase i don't really know how i'm going to go about it to be honest with you i uh haven't really gotten that far because it's gonna be a lot of figures you know 13 minifigures if general hawks is included um and i mean i'm not totally even sure if it's gonna be a 13 minifigure showcase i may not even be able to end up making luke because of lack of reference or maybe i won't be able to make leia for lack of reference i haven't really gotten that far yet i've just been focusing on the main characters like you know r2 3po poe more recently those are the main three i'm focusing on right now and then i'm going to move on to finishing hux and uh then leia and luke possibly probably not in that order so i don't know there's all these things going through my head no idea how i'm actually gonna go about doing the actual showcase itself probably lots of cool editing and things i don't normally do in showcase that will be added into it so I mean it's going to be pretty extensive I'm probably going to do what I had to do with the Age of Ultron showcase and like time myself um, so I mean maybe I'll give myself like two minutes per figure but that would probably make it almost about half an hour I don't know I don't want to push that because then you have to factor in like the intro the outro the skits and everything else so yeah 
Lots of stuff, um, but more stuff. We're only like halfway through this vlog, God. I need to speed it up. Um, wow. Black Black Ops Three that happened, and uh, the multiplayer is actually pretty decent. It's not really something that I really want to go back to when I've got Battlefront and uh, Halo Five Guardians right there in front of me. I'm not exactly going leaning toward Battlefront uh, Black Ops Three because it's like uh, the next Call of Duty is going to be out next year, and whatever I, I do in Black Ops Three is going to be forgotten in 12 months anyway. So I mean, I don't really know that unless a, a Call of Duty game is really amazing, you don't really see me jumping on board. And honestly, I haven't really attached myself to any Call of Duty franchise that has been put out since the Modern Warfare franchise ended because I honestly love those games to death. And uh, Call of Duty's since have really not done it for me and entirely. And Black Ops Three's campaign, while visually stunning. The campaign was gorgeous. I mean, the graphics were incredible. God, the story was terrible. Oh my God! I, I the characters the characters sucked. the The plot sucked. I mean, the the idea sucked. I, I hated the whole thing, the whole story. But visually, Black Ops Three's campaign was stunning, and the co op was dysfunctional. It led to a lot of crashes and lag and a bunch of other crap that Halo Five did not suffer from. So, uh, just saying, man. Anyway, um. Fallout 4 also happened. Unfortunately, Fallout 4 is quite a time commitment. And while I did finish the power armor and it did turn out really, really awesome, and I really uh, had a great time adding all the weathering to this figure and the amazing sculpt that, uh, you know, Bricks Alive Josiah did on this is incredible. You guys probably already saw the showcase by now. Um, it, it just, uh, I, you know, I don't have the time to put into Fallout 4 right now. Maybe one day I'll be able to go back to it. But right now, uh, I've just been watching a walkthrough while working on the Force Awakens figures just so I get a general idea of the story and I, you know, I can see what goes on in it. Um, so there's that. And Fallout 4. Yeah. And also, uh, Legends of Tomorrow. What? Joe? Yeah. Okay, I thought you died. Um, no. Yeah, the Legends of Tomorrow trailer happened. And uh, that finally came out. And it looks really awesome. I can't wait for the uh, Arrow Flash crossover this year. It's going to be in like a week now that we're already past Tuesday and Wednesday. So that's really exciting. I can't wait to see how that, you know, that go down. It was really awesome. Flash vs. Arrow last year. And I can't wait to see what they're going to do for this and to lead into Legends of Tomorrow, introducing freaking Vandal Savage. Such, so exciting. Huge DC villain that I love. And I uh, can't wait to see, hopefully, Casper Crump, who's playing him, actually does a really good job because uh, Vandal Savage is kind of a huge villain uh, for DC. So, yeah. And then the Atom. I know a lot of you guys are probably asking or, you know, wanting to know now that I've mentioned Legends of Tomorrow. Whatever happened to this guy? He's right, right? No, not, not Sarah. There he is. There's the Adam from like the start of this year that, and I never finished him. And that was because Arrow Season 3 ended and I was like, oh wait, I don't care to finish this figure right now. And no one else really does. So I might as well wait till Legends of Tomorrow. And that's what I'm doing because he's not having a costume change. His Adam suit is going to be the same in it. Uh, so I'm just going to continue on that as soon as I'm ready to make Legends of Tomorrow figures. I'm not totally sure if I'm going to do that for release or if I'm just going to do that on and off throughout the year. Because, I mean, making a whole ensemble team on top of the Deadpool, Dawn of Justice, and Civil War figures I'll already be working on in January... I don't really see where Legends of Tomorrow is going to fit in, so I mean, maybe I'll make one or two for the launch and then just gradually make the rest as the year goes on. Like I said, we'll see. Not that far in yet. I still got to make the Christmas video this year and the freaking end of the year wrap up edit that I do all the time or, you know, annually. So, I mean, still a lot to go. Uh, Jessica Jones happened. I'm not really going to say too much about Jessica Jones other than it's, it's a really incredible show. It's amazing. I have no idea how the hell I'm supposed to believe any of that fits into the Marvel Cinematic Universe because it is dark, gory, depressing, and all of the above awful while it still tells an amazing story played out by amazing actors. Freaking um, David Tennant, especially as Kilgrave, is absolutely awesome. Kristen Ritter as Jessica Jones, she's great, but it's so dark and depressing and it's really gory at times. It's just god to picture like the avengers tower is in their same city and like this is all going down beneath them it's like really frightening but then i think of daredevil and how much i loved their daredevil to death and how i can't wait to see them all team up in the defenders so i mean it's still you know while he uh he didn't show up in jessica jones unfortunately the mentions were still pretty cool and one character that you might be familiar with what spoilers it's not a spoiler if I tell tell them that a character doesn't show up. Honestly, it's a warning if you get yeah you know just not, so you don't get your hopes up. Um, so don't watch it with your family, kids. Yeah, don't do that. Jessica Jones is not a family show. It, there's a lot of violent sex scenes too, and uh, on top of the violence itself. So uh, yeah. Um, anyway, yeah. 
something else I did. I want to show you this too. Back on the topic of Legends of Tomorrow, I repainted Laurel's hair because I didn't really like the original hair color because I realized that I actually based it off the season three outfit. And then the more I watched Arrow season four, I was like, oh, wait, she's not wearing the wig anymore. So I broke out the uh, paint that I used to make the uh, Invisible Woman's hair for the Fantastic Four figures. And I basically just repainted the whole hair piece to make it more accurate. And it looks way, way better. So maybe I'll make a crossover, you know, maybe I'll make a photo to celebrate the uh, Arrow Flash crossover. And you'll see that in uh, some better quality rather than just seeing it through the crappy lens that is my iPhone 6's lens. Um, so yeah, another thing, Zoom is going to be a figure. No idea when, because we the reference, while well, yes, we have seen him and we've seen a lot of him, we still haven't seen all of him. So not sure when, but Zoom will happen. Just again, I, I have a full plan for how I'm going to make him. I already know exactly what I'm going to do for the head. And it's just a matter of actually doing it when the time is right and when The Force Awakens is over and when we have good enough reference. So Zoom will happen. Just don't know when, but when he does, hopefully you'll see Jay Garrick to accompany him in the showcase because he is still around as well. And um, yeah, so aside from that, one last thing, I, a couple of last things I want to talk about before I end this vlog, this 30 minute vlog. Again, I warned you guys how long this was going to be. Um, Spectre. I saw Spectre. I, I went out to, you know, I mean, I've been following the production on Spectre, at least I've seen updates about it rather on Twitter, you know, this past year and, you know, seeing like Dave Bautista, who was Drax and Guardians of the Galaxy cast in it and how he was going to have a big role. You know, I was, I was pretty excited for the whole thing and how much, you know, apparently the, the studio was dumping into it, especially budget wise. It seemed like it was going to be a really incredible Bond film. Like it was going to be the definitive James Bond film. Like it wasn't going to be better than this. And then I went to go see it and I was like, wow, this is what all the hype was about. And while yes, it's a great film, no doubt it's awesome. That's it. It's like there wasn't anything else. It was just, it was some, it was action sequences that I've seen before. And when I say that, meaning there wasn't anything that really blew me away. I wasn't like, oh my God, he's doing this. I've never seen anything like this before. Oh my God, I can't believe that's happened. I've never seen anything like that before. It was just like, it was, it just hit, it hit the James Bond beats that you would expect. And then the movie was over. I was like, okay. And I understand the villain. I'm not going to spoil it, but I feel like maybe if I saw the previous movies, it would have helped a little bit um, because I, I only saw Skyfall and maybe part of Quantum of Solace one time. I don't remember. Um, so, I mean, maybe if I rewatch the other Bond films with Daniel Craig and then I go back to Spectre one day, maybe it'll be better. But, I mean, I just didn't really enjoy Spectre all that much. It was just a great James Bond film and nothing else. <laughs> so, I mean, that happened. And also... Um, I, you, I do have to say, though, production value was incredible on it, and I really do respect what the studio and all the actors did put into it, and clearly it was a huge effort. It's just, I wasn't, I don't know, maybe James Bond films are just not my thing. Um, anyway, possible Assassin's Creed Syndicate figures. I did watch an entire walkthrough for that, because that's another game I don't have time to play. Um, I did watch the whole walkthrough for that, and it was definitely better than uh, Unity, clearly. I think uh, Unity it, Unity's story was not nearly as coherent or as good as uh, as uh, Syndicate's was, even though Syndicate wasn't, you know, mind-blowing either. Syndicate was still, had a better ending, I think, and uh, the characters are definitely much more relatable and just seemed like they were much more on top of things as assassins. So I really did like Jacob and Evie Fry as characters characters and uh, it's just like i don't have time to make them i even went as far as to make i had the bodies put together for jacob i already took it apart though to make hux and uh so this was jacob fry's body but not anymore and uh, i do have evie's body still ready to go though and uh, what i was going to do even i'm not sure if i'll ever make these figures guys just want to say right now but uh, i was going to take a ray head and i did take one of the, those hair pieces i forget it, you know like, this is the hair piece that has like the big um like ponytail it was introduced i think in the prince of persia sets in like whatever year that movie came out um so i mean i, I did take that hair piece cut the ponytail off painted over everything i cut some of the bangs off and it looked pretty cool and i even i modified the jacket heavily or her coat to uh, get started on it and paint it you know whenever the time was right and you know but it's just i'm not seeing the time it's like i put together these bodies i kind of started on evie and i had the body for jacob ready to go and then i was just like i don't have time for this and i had to just stop because the force awakens is in 22 23 days and uh, three weeks is not a lot of time, so I've really got to make sure I'm ready to go for The Force Awakens. That's my number one priority. The Force Awakens, Star Wars Episode Seven is I've waited for it 10 years now, ever since I realized there was not a seventh Star Wars film when I first got into the franchise when I was a little kid. So, I mean, The Force Awakens is a huge deal for me as a person. I want to make sure I give this my all, and that in three weeks, I hit you guys with one hell of a video. So, on that note, I'm going to end it there. 
And Joe, say goodbye. Bye. Okay, bye.